Winter Cut Day 44. We got the whole thing here. Vitamins, electrolytes, caffeine, creatine, protein, uh, even some immune support. That is pretty nice. Liquid IV down. Hydration acquired. Immune support ready. Immune system boosted. Micronutrients ready. Micronutrients ingested. Anybody else think that coffee tastes a little bit like pretzels? Just me? Okay, I don't know. But the last thing on the agenda is the power, okay? The, the power. We got whey protein. And if you guys didn't know, I mean, let's be real. Protein is protein. And yeah, some proteins might stimulate more muscle protein synthesis or myofibrillar protein synthesis than other proteins. But the reality is I've been doing this for years and it works just fine for me. My brother passed it down to me and I'm going to pass it down to, uh, you know, if, if I ever have a little brother, which I won't, but uh, if I ever have, um, well, I'm probably going to have a son or some, some kid who likes to work out. I'll pass down the way to him, okay? Because that's the way it goes. <laughs> well, I actually could not drink that all in one go because it was too hot, but I'm going to, you know, obviously finish it. But little story time. My dad yesterday, he was eating this beef stew that my mom made and he had it before it had the chance to cool down. And my dad just couldn't wait. He ate it. He ate the whole thing while it was scalding hot and tears were coming out of his eyes. He wasn't crying, but tears were coming out of his eyes and he was sweating bullets because it was so hot what he was eating, but he just kept eating it. He didn't care. It was so funny. So I don't recommend that, guys, unless you want to turn into a freaking uh, nuclear bomb. I mean, that's just crazy, man. My dad literally went nuclear for some beef stew. Protein activated. That's a little more than a third, but we'll split it up accordingly later. All right. Almost 12 minutes into our cardio for the day. I'm really just trying to get some movement in. Uh, I didn't come I didn't come down here and say, oh man, I'm you know not feeling well. I don't think I have to do this today. I should just rest. I'm like, you know what, dude? I know it'll help my immune system and everything. Help me destroy this cold. Ugh. But uh <laughs> mildly kidding about that. But uh yeah, I mean, I'm just really enjoying myself down here. At a moderate pace, I've burned 40 calories so far, so I'm pretty much right on track. And, uh, yeah, I mean, already got the chicken out of the way. We got, uh, posing to do. But in the meantime, I want to just talk about, uh, training with a cold. So, I've heard, I'm not, just so you know, this is not medical advice, I'm not a doctor. And you don't have to listen to me whatsoever. All right. But based on my own anecdotal experience, I would say yes. It is probably good to train, especially if it's just in your throat and above. And it'll probably only help. Now, there's a fine line between training when you have a cold and getting other people sick. I think if you're going to the gym and you've got this, this cold going on, you don't want to spread that, you know? It's not the nicest thing to do, for sure. It can disrupt people's schedule, it can make people, you know, I mean, getting a cold sucks, so. But, especially if you have the ability to go on a walk, if you have the ability to do the exercise bike, if you have the ability to work out in your home gym, those are all things you should do. But, the second I would stop recommending working out with a cold is if it goes down here and below, right? If it goes into your lungs or anything. Because then, you have a hard time breathing, it's, it might make it worse because you're breathing so heavy. 
there's a lot of factors that go into it. But I've kind of just taken that approach of if, I, if it's here and above, I train. So now the nice thing is, well, the only nice part about this is I happen to get a cold like <laughs> the night that I finished up my leg day. So uh, it was nice because I have all these rest days ahead where I don't have anywhere to go or do anything and I'll definitely feel better by the weekend. So, uh, you know, all that to say, I think also when you are lifting with a cold, it'll actually clear up everything quite a bit. Like right, I came down here and I, I could not breathe through my nose at all. It was totally clogged. And uh, I'm not saying it's clear totally now, but it's definitely way more clear and I, I can breathe through it. So despite the fact that I am breathing through my mouth though, because I still got boogers. That'd be pretty nasty if I just started going. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I also want to talk about some approaches that I'll take to my training in the future. So for, as I learn more and more about hypertrophy and bodybuilding training, I realized that isolation is genuinely the most important thing, right? And that you also should manipulate factors like rest time and, you know, exercise order and rep scheme to avoid fatigue and maximize motor unit recruitment, right? And for anybody who doesn't know, a motor unit is just a muscle fiber in conjunction with a motor neuron. And what a motor neuron does is it sends an electrical impulse through your central nervous system down through the nerves to wherever you are using that muscle. So if I right now want to curl, right, with, <clears throat> with just air, I use very low threshold motor units to actually lift my arm up. I didn't have to use barely any muscle to lift my arm up. But the second you introduce 50 pounds, right, all of a sudden high threshold motor units are acting because now I'm struggling. Now 50 pounds is actually really heavy and hard. So my central nervous system has to generate a lot of energy and send more impulses down to more muscle fibers. and their motor neurons, each motor neuron corresponding with the muscle fibers has to fire. So when you do a compound movement like a deadlift, for example, you're using so many motor neurons, so many muscle fibers uh, that it has to kind of spread the energy out. And there's no one place that is really getting significant development during a deadlift because the energy is very spread out and your body knows how to be efficient, right? But if you're doing, let's say, a single arm lat pull down, right? You are getting high degrees of motor unit recruitment if you're lifting heavier, especially, or just getting, getting close to failure. Because guess what? The only thing that's acting is, is you're using straps, not your forearm, pretty much almost exclusively your lat. Sure, you're going to get in rear delt and rhomboid and a little bit of bicep and brachialis and brachioradialis and all these things. But the main thing driving the movement is your lap. So you're gonna get significant levels of motor unit recruitment there and the highest threshold motor units. The big muscle fibers that have more potential to grow. The ones that have not been grown yet. The ones that are giving you that struggling feeling because you're approaching your highest level of perception of effort, right? And for anybody who says, oh, I went to muscular failure. There's no such thing as muscular failure. Your muscles don't fail. And somebody might go, whoa, 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 whoa. Your muscles do fail. And I'm like, well, I want you to take two dumbbells. I got this, I got this idea from Paul Carter. Take two dumbbells, right? And just curl them until you fail, until you reach absolute muscular failure, right? You're totally depleted, right? You have nothing left. And then I want you to try to curl with just one of your arms instead. You can literally get more reps. Why is that? You couldn't do both at the same time, but you could do one arm for a couple reps, and then you could do the other arm for a couple reps. The limit is literally just your central nervous system. 
if I had a power generator hooked up to my brain in the motor neuron area, right, and was able to send electri electrical signals through that, oh, if I had a power generator over here hooked up to my bicep and sent electrical signals to it, I could still move huge amounts of weight, right? Because the muscle isn't actually damaged. The damage and the damage sets in after, well after training. Because what happens is the damage sets in well after training. And I don't want to get into that because that's a whole other subject. But the muscle never actually fails. It is your central nervous system that fails to produce more power basically to those muscles, to those high threshold motor units that are that require a lot of energy, right? And there's a bunch of other things that go into it. But basically, your goal, right, is to be able to get access to the highest threshold motor units possible by hard training consistently over years and years and years and keep leveling up, right? You're at level one, low threshold motor units, max those out. Level two, slightly higher threshold, max it out. Level three, slightly higher threshold, max it out. Level four, and it gets harder and harder over time. The levels get bigger, harder, all that. But the principles stay the same. So my whole point is uh, that's why isolation is so effective and important for bigger bodybuilders, right? Like right now, I'm doing, you know, pretty intense isolation for like my biceps, right? Because I just think it's cool. I want them to be huge. But I really don't need to. I could totally get away with doing, say, barbell curls standing. But the most optimal thing that I could possibly think of was single arm dumbbell preacher curls because the strength curve matches the degrees where the biceps have best leverage to flex the elbow, zero to 90, right? And the hardest part of a preacher curl is zero to 90. So with that said, that is a separate principle. That's called neuromechanical matching. You match up where the muscle has best leverage in the joint angle range of motion with the strength curve of a exercise, right? So a really good example of that is doing bottom half range of motion lat pull downs for the lats, right? Especially a wide grip is going to target your lower lats generally, right? I can get into that, but again, I don't want to overcomplicate it. So I'm taking a wider grip, right? And since I know that the lats have excellent leverage from 90 degrees and below, I want to take advantage of that, right? And say, okay, they don't really have good leverage from here to here. So when there's that huge stretch, so they can't produce a lot of force, therefore they can't get mechanical tension nearly as effectively. And, and all I'm doing is just really wasting energy up there, right? Because it's not gonna add to my stimulus. Because it's most likely not gonna add anything to my stimulus, right? Especially considering the lats don't experience stretch mediated hypertrophy. So we're gonna do 90 degrees or slightly above, right? start here maybe, and just go down and really isolate that portion of the range of motion and watch your lats blow up. Now, of course, if you're a beginner, you don't have to worry about any of this. If you are even a couple years in, you don't have to worry about this. But the second you start becoming an advanced lifter, you should, right? Because then you need to be more creative with your training. You might have genuinely plateaued because you're not adequately stimulating the muscles, despite training very hard. You might be really grueling training hard, but you need to allocate the energy that your central nervous system is capable of producing and put it into isolation. So that was probably the most scientific I will ever get on you guys because I don't want to complicate things. Although, I don't know, it was fun, so I'll probably do it again. But, and I have a little story for you guys. I was talking to this one guy and I was explaining to him uh, in a very simple form, stuff like this, much more simple than I gave you guys. I know you guys are smart and it, this is nothing to you, but I was talking to this guy about, okay, well, here's how this works, here's how that works. And I was explaining it in a very simple manner. And this guy goes, no, nah, I don't care about that, man. I just want to get big. And I'm like, 
So hold on guys, I need to dial in for a minute. I have two minutes left to burn nine calories. One hundred calories. Twenty-eight minutes, fifty-nine seconds. Boys, we did it. Now I'm gonna cool down for a minute. Just let everything chill. And yeah, I will see you guys in the kitchen for posing. Madamina, il catalogo è questo delle belle che amo il padron mio. Un catalogo lieve o fatio, osservate, leggete con me, osservate, leggete con me. In Italia 640, in Albania 231, all right boys i hope you enjoyed this video i had a great time making it and uh i will see you tomorrow